This is Eric Veichel, Senior Application Engineer at Altair. During the video today, I'm going to explain the importance of setting up your factory so that your simulations run as quickly as possible. So in this simple example, I've got uh, a solid cylinder and a two-stage funnel. And inside that funnel, I've got a factory that is going to introduce material at 60 kilograms per second with an initial velocity of negative five meters per second in the Z direction. If I just take a look at this from the side view, switch this to mesh, you can see that the factory is inside the funnel. And I switch over to the simulator and run it. In this case, I'm running on CUDA GPU. You can see that uh, particles are being introduced, but very quickly the material builds up to the point where it is in the same area as the factory, where the particles that have already been created are occupying the same space that the factory is, is consuming or trying to put the particles, trying to place the particles. So one important thing to realize while you're solving a simulation through the GUI is that there's the solve report. Perhaps you need to right click up on the header to see the solve report. If I select the new factory one, that's the factory that's placing these particles, you can see the total particles created. And at the moment, it's around 38,000. Total particles regenerated, way more, I'm talking about 48 now it just refreshed up to 63 million and we have uh, 26,000 failed you can also right click in this area and refresh and these values will be updated so what i want to point out here or what you ought to pay attention to is for the total number of particles we've got uh, 45,000 we've got uh, orders of magnitude more regenerated and uh, what the solver is doing while well, that's while the simulation is running is spending a lot of time trying to find a location where it can place a particle to meet the targeted mass flow rate of 60 kilograms per second. An alternative way of setting up the factory still getting the same mass flow rate, and I'll show you that deck in a minute, is to move the factory up further away from this bottleneck and allow the particles to be introduced and exit the factory as fast as possible. So before we switch over to the alternative factory setup, I just want to point out here that we had a total number of particles created 16,000 563 and we've got millions so we've got 123 million regenerations and 37,000 and change failed particles so that that is a very good indicator in itself that the simulation is running slower than it could otherwise be if the factory wasn't slowing it down Another thing to realize here is the actual creation rate was only 18 kilograms per second, whereas the, the target was 60. So if we switch over to the other simulation deck that I've already set up, in this case, we've got the exact same geometry, the exact same cylinder and two-stage funnel. The only difference here, if I switch back to mesh, is that we've got a larger or taller wider diameter factory that's further away from where the bottleneck will be in the simulation within this factory i've got the same 60 kilogram per second and the same initial velocity of negative five in the z direction meters per second so if i switch over and solve this simulation you'll see that once it starts running, it runs considerably faster. There's still the buildup of material in the two-stage conic section, 
And if I right click and refresh and go to the factory, in this case, see the total particles created, 31,000, regenerated, only 3,000, and zero failed. So that is a more ideal situation where your particles created is much larger than the regeneration or the failed particles. So by my watch, the impact of having the factory poorly defined resulted in a salt time of approximately 140 seconds, whereas moving the factory up away from that bottleneck resulted in the simulation solving in 40 seconds. So it's a three and a half times speed increase. So I encourage you when you're setting up your factories in EDEM to pay attention to the number of particles regenerated and failed. And as a general rule of thumb, I would say you would want your total particles regenerated as low as possible, but say an acceptable uh, range might be up to 20%.